Okay, so in this video, we're going to discuss what the hell is going on in New York. Holy shit. And we'll talk about how Tom Wilson just pretty much, uh, you know, created his own little negative butterfly effect in the NHL as he injured Panarin of the Rangers and ultimately would lead to the GM and president of the New York Rangers getting fired. And don't give me that shit about the Darren Dreger sources conspiracy theory that these guys were about to get fired anyway. Because, uh, come on, jeez. Okay, maybe they were going to fire them when the season had ended, but to fire them like three to four games before it ends, and you know, after the previous 24 hour roller coaster ride that happened yeah this definitely had something to do with the twitter comment it's just science so let's dive right into it but first if you guys are a fan of these kind of videos please consider subscribing to my channel as i upload hockey content daily and would really enjoy if you guys decided to tag along for the ride now i normally don't express my opinions on teams that are outside of the Northern Division. I mean, I mainly focus on the Habs. But really, like, how can you not talk about this shit right now? This is like finding the corpse of a Bigfoot in the woods and then just being like, meh, fuck it. Maybe I won't talk about it. Of course you're gonna talk about it, man. It's Bigfoot. So I'm not gonna show the actual clip here of what went down because uh, that shit is kind of frowned upon around here. But I mean, you guys probably saw what happened like 40 times already. Your kids were showing you. The wife was showing you. Old grandpa was showing you. It's been plastered all over the TV and on the internet. So basically what happened is we saw Bushnevich get a little close to the Washington net. He goes down in a vulnerable position and Tom Wilson just goes in for the kill. For some insane reason he decides, hey, I'm going to punch this guy in the freaking head here. So he does just that and Panarin, you know, being a good teammate and all, he's like, hey man, what the hell? He jumps on the back of Wilson and a huge scrum happens. And then we see Wilson and Panarin come out of the pile and Wilson gets the helmet off of Panarin and he just goes yoink and grabs his hair and just pulls it backwards as they fall onto the ice. And then he just proceeds to ragdoll Panarin while he's down. Now, Panarin would suffer an injury on this play, but believe me, this could have been way worse. It could have been way more disgusting had his head took the brunt of that fall the way he fell down to the ice. And I mean, I saw a guy hit his face one time off the ice, and uh, it wasn't pretty. I forget his name though. Uh, oh yeah, it was George Peros, the guy who was actually the man of the D.O.P.S. Remember that, George? Yeah, that wasn't fun, was it? And then good old Peros and friends would come to the conclusion that, hey, Wilson, you see, he might be a repeat offender, but come on. Why suspend the guy a couple of games and make everybody happy? We could just fine him 5,000 bucks and spank his ass with a paddle for a minute or two. And to put this into perspective, I'm pretty sure $5,000 is exactly what Henrik Lundqvist was fined a couple of years ago when he sprayed Sidney Crosby with, uh, water. Yeah, <laughs> pretty big deal. Lesson learned, huh? No water fights in the NHL. Yeah, Lundquist had to toss the old water balloons into the garbage can after that one. And that was exactly when things even went more sour. Had these guys taken the appropriate steps, this massive butterfly effect that resulted in guys getting fired, fans going crazy, and, uh, well, the Royal Rumble that we saw last night probably wouldn't have happened either. But you gotta admit, it was fun. Wasn't that great? I just love old-time hockey. I mean, my first ever player that I considered my favorite was back when Lyle Odeline was the warrior of the Habs. And a lot of you listeners are probably Habs fans or Leafs fans, and you were definitely tuning into this game in some sort of fashion to see how the Rangers had responded. The only thing I didn't like from the game was how Bushnevich went, uh, you know, kamikaze in there and decided to cross-check Anthony Mantha in the face. I mean, okay, your ass is chapped, kid, because of what's been going on. But, uh, isn't this kind of hypocritical to do something like that? Drop the frickin' gloves or something, man. Jeez. So, yeah, right off the opening face-off, we see three fights go down at once. It was funny as hell. However, in the background of all these shenanigans, we see Zidane Chera just kind of skate up to the New York Rangers defenseman, and he's all like, hey, who wants some of this, huh? Huh? Who wants some? And the Rangers defensemen were just there like... 
It was hilarious. Chera really wanted to get in on some of the action during this game, but hey, he couldn't find a dance partner because uh, the man's a mountain. Then we see some more fights later, including one where Lars Eller gets involved in a scrap. I mean, hey, that isn't Lars Eller's game. The guy can't fight himself out of a wet paper bag, but he hung in there. He ate up some of those knuckle sandwiches and went in the box like a champ. And the minute Wilson stepped out onto the ice, it was Smith who hunted him down like a dog chasing a rabbit and they had a pretty good tilt you know with Wilson getting the upper hand but hey that's not the point Smith did get some licks in on him and that must have felt good Wilson would even leave the game they said he had an upper body injury the Rangers bench were probably thinking good mission accomplished Panarin I mean he's at home straightening his hair and he's probably thinking good yeah redemption of some sort but uh this was some fun stuff and you know what that Washington team, they are tight as hell. That's one group of guys that are tight. I mean, there is so much negativity surrounding Tom Wilson right now, but that guy is a beast, and I would take him on the halves any day of the freaking week. I actually wanted him a few years ago, right when he broke into the league. He is one of the best enforcers in the game right now, and he's a good player to boot. Uh, literally. In the game last night, TJ Oshie scored a hat trick and hey, he had an emotional night. His dad just passed away. The team came in and gave him some hugs. Hats off to Oshie and the Caps. I mean, that is a solid team right there. And also, hats off to the Rangers as well. They came into this game with not many tough guys on that roster and was probably an easy target to push around. But they stood up for themselves as a team and answered the bell at a time when they felt the league had hung them out to dry. So whether we believe that's what happened or not it's still good on them as a team <laughs> yeah that was some old time hockey anyway let me know what you guys thought about that game last night did any of you secretly chime in and have a listen even though you don't necessarily cheer for the rangers or caps because i'm not gonna lie i was streaming the Habs game on the laptop and uh i had the rangers game on the tv at the very beginning because my spidey senses were tingling and i felt something was up Anyway guys, that does it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you next time.